The Seattle Seahawks first string offensive line played in 18 snaps against the Dallas Cowboys. And today we're going to analyze every single one of them because we've got a lot of really, really nice snaps from guys like Charles Cross, who we expect to take a massive year two leap over to Abraham Lucas, who has superstar potential. I'm very fired up to get into this film right now. Now, this play actually is very interesting in itself because I've actually seen this on social media a little bit. And people are talking about Damian Lewis and how he kind of gets pushed back. But I think there's a part of this play that's kind of getting left out there. A part of this play isn't really being talked about. And that is the fact that Charles Cross literally helps the Cowboys defensive tackle. He literally ends up on the backside of Oso Odigizua, as you guys can see right here. He's basically going to push this guy backwards. He's basically going to push against what Damian Lewis is trying to do. And you see it right there. He's really pushing Odigizua towards where the running back's trying to go. Now, I understand this, this is a dual concept, and I understand what they're trying to do, but again, it's just not a very good job. Again, not a big deal. The first play of the game. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. All right, you guys, jumping into the next play, this is a second and nine. The offensive line's going to do a really, really nice job, and they're going to keep the quarterback clean all around. Just a beautiful overall rep. To me, if you guys really watch this play in slow motion, when you guys watch the right guard and right tackle, who are basically going to be in one-on-one -on -one situations, they're going to do a really nice job. Starting with Abraham Lucas going up against Dante Fowler Jr., he's going to get both hands positioned perfectly. That allows him to basically anchor down within the rep. And you can see that at the end of this rep, he ends up anchoring down. So to me, this is a really, really nice job by Lucas. Right hand to the inside, left hand to the outside shoulder, really anchors down. He gives up maybe a yard or two too much in terms of his depth, but you can see he still ends up anchoring down at the end of this. Fully shuts down Dante Fowler. Even if you guys watch Phil Haynes, who's going up against the rookie, Mozzie Smith, Haynes is going to do a great job getting his hands to the inside of Smith, and he's going to also anchor down. Just a really nice job with the hand placement. Drops the anchor, shuts down Smith, who's a very, very strong defensive tackle. And then from there, if you guys watch the center to left tackle, they're all going to do a great job as well. Damian Lewis is going to get his hand onto Osa Odigizua. He's going to fully help Evan Brown stop Odigizua, and you can really see it. Uh, Lewis is going to keep his helmet to the left to see if Charles Cross needs any help. He's going to miss a little bit of an issue with the right hand, but then he's going to turn his head and fully push Odigizua so Evan Brown is able to kind of shut that down. Then he's going to come back around, and he's going to hit Sam Williams. Just a really, really nice overall rep by the entire offensive line. Check this out, the fourth play of the game. It looks like it's some sort of duo concept, and Zach Charbonnet, in my opinion, is going to miss the cutback lane. He only picks up one yard. You see Sam Williams, the defensive end, blows up the tight end. Disley on this one absolutely crushes him, gets off the block, and makes a play. A really nice shot by the second-year defensive end. But when I say Zach Charbonnet may have missed the, the gap, I say that because this is a duo concept which means these four offensive linemen are going to flow up to the linebackers. And to me, if the running back kicked this into one of these lanes, you would have had more success. You really see it opening up. You can really see that there's at least a couple of options here for the running back. He's going to bounce it towards the left, and you can see there's just nowhere to go. You got an unblocked backside defender here. Sam Williams obviously blows up the tight end. Not a big deal. Obviously, it is Charbonnet's second ever NFL game. He'll see this clearer. He'll watch the tape. Um, not a big deal. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Check this next play out. You got a third and eight. Geno Smith's going to throw it to the wide receiver here who isn't able to bring it in. A really nice job once again by the offensive line. Although it's an incomplete pass, you can see that the quarterback had a lot of time. And to me, the thing that really sticks out with this play is going to be the left guard. If you guys watch Damian Lewis, he's going to do a great job with Osa Odigizua, who is going to run a game. So he's going to run right into Charles Cross. He's going to try to displace both of these guys for Sam Williams to loop around to the inside and really be that free rusher. But Lewis is going to do a really, really nice job getting both hands into Odigizua, fully pushing him off. So just a really, really nice job, fully pushing him, extending those arms outwards. Coming back to the inside and picking up the defensive end, Sam Williams, and he's going to anchor down against him. Of course, for Charles Cross, he does a good job being able to pick it up. But of course, I would say that this is a harder block for the left guard than it is the left tackle, especially since the left guard fully gets those hands into the defensive tackle. Obviously, that's going to allow him to win. Just a really, really nice job, if you ask me. 
Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Check this rep out. Watch Charles cross on this play. He's going to take the fight to Sam Williams. And Sam Williams is actually going to beat him to an inside move. Not a big deal because the quarterback obviously sees it and he's able to hit his wide receiver for a 28-yard gain. But to me, when Charles Cross is going to take the fight to these defensive ends, you can't lose to the inside. This is why a lot of tackles don't actually do this because if you lose to the inside, you're giving these defensive ends a quick path to the quarterback. Of course, in this instance, Geno Smith is already kind of looking over towards the left. So he's going to be able to quickly recognize that, take a couple steps to his left to avoid the pressure. But the thing I want you guys to think about is, what if Geno Smith wasn't looking to the left? What if he was looking to the right? And what if no one was open initially and he was trying to go through his reads? Would he take a big hit in this instance? Because the thing right now is Geno Smith has no idea where Abraham Lucas' defensive end is. He has no idea if he's about to take a hit or not. So to me, he's got to do a slightly better job. But if you guys do watch the right tackle, he basically does the same technique where he takes the fight to the defensive end. But he makes sure that the defensive end just kind of goes up field. Great job right there by him. Cross, just do a little bit of a better job when you make the contact. Uh, he does lean a little bit into this, and you really see that as Sam Williams is going to counter this to the inside. You're going to see that Charles Cross is going to lean as he's trying to make contact right there. And as he's leaning over that way, you can see that Sam Williams does a great job with the left punch. Brings the right arm over the top. But even then, Cross still does do a good job kind of turning, readjusting himself, and sticking to Sam Williams. So a good finish to a bad start of a rep. The biggest play of the game for the Seattle Seahawks with the ones, in my opinion, was this 29-yard run. And sometimes you only need to see one play to really recognize how good an offensive line unit could possibly be. And this is kind of one of those type of plays. To me, the entire offensive line does such a great job, and it cannot be underestimated how great of a job these guys did up front. And it really starts if you guys watch the center. The center is going to do a great job reaching to the right side of Mozzie Smith, the rookie first round pick, and he's going to fully seal this guy off. And this is a really, really nice seal off block. When you're able to flip the hips the way he does here, that's going to right away give the running back a lane. And this play right here does not pop without that block. To me, this is why Evan Brown was brought in. This is why the Seattle Seahawks wanted this guy. He's smart, great technique, great footwork, understands blocking angles. And just like that, you get a 29-yard run. Now, of course, Phil Haynes and Abraham Lucas also do their part. Abraham Lucas is going to quickly set up here, and he's going to seal off this defense end. He's going to really create the wall here so that that defensive end cannot come back to the inside and make the play. And Phil Haynes is going to reach up to the linebacker here. And of course, Brown's going to cut this guy off. And then you get some good backside blocks here as well. So just an overall great job by the offensive line. I love that Phil Haynes gets his hands over into Smith. Make sure that the center is able to overtake him. And then from there, he's going to climb up to the second level defender here. He's going to push him out. Just a really, really nice job if you ask me. Of course, you see the Abraham Lucas block as well. He's going to get the hands right there on Dante Fowler and really just set it up. So the running back has a really, really nice lane. I mean, to me, this is exactly what it takes to have a great offensive line. You got to have guys that know how to work together. You got to have smart players individually. And I think that's a big part of it as well. If your guys aren't smart, if your guys can't play smart, they're not going to be a good unit. It doesn't matter how great of a player you may have. But this offensive line really shined for me. And I'm very, very excited as it continues to develop and it continues to get better. I truly think this is a top five to seven offensive line for multiple reasons. And one of those reasons is plays like this. If you guys watch Abraham Lucas, how he look at how he's going to flip and fully seal off this defensive end. I mean, it does not get better than this. This is part of why I think Abraham Lucas is one of the best tackles in the NFL is because he's able to get to a reach block. He's able to seal. And just like that, you have a winning rep by Lucas. Now, the play does not work. It actually only picks up one yard. Evan Brown's not going to be able to reach here on o Osa Odigizua. Evan Brown has to do a better job, but Phil A. Haynes also has to make sure that Evan Brown fully is able to take on a guy like Odigizua. If there's one thing with Odigizua, it is that he's fast, he's quick, he's reactive, and you see him get out of his stance. And he understands that, hey, if the center's coming towards me, I need to make sure he doesn't reach me. In this instance, he gets both hands into Brown, and Haynes really just kind of puts a left hand on it. Haynes has to push off and, and help Evan Brown. The same way if you guys watch Lewis here, he's going to get the left hand into the defensive lineman here, 
and he's going to push off with the left hand. And that's going to allow the backside tackle overtake that D tackle. Now, in the instance with Phil Haynes, he doesn't help Evan Brown enough. And you can see Odigizua is going to chase it from the front side. And he's going to make the play. Again, you got to do a better job if you guys ask me. Not a big deal, but it is sometimes the little things that just need to be cleaned up. And do keep in mind, this is the first time this unit's playing together against live competition. So never underestimate how much better this unit will get as they kind of get reps. Let's go ahead and get to the next play. Check this play out. Charles Cross is actually going to allow a sack to the second year defensive end, Sam Williams. And to me, you got to do a better job if you're Charles Cross. Now, I will say this. I think Sam Williams is a really, really good defensive end. And you see it in his movement. And I think with that, the movement really gets Cross here. Sam Williams is going to try basically two things. And then the third move is going to work. So what Sam Williams is going to do is he's going to actually hezzy to the inside right there with the head. You can see the head kind of goes from outside to the inside. And then he almost attacks this back to the outside and Cross catches that, which is a great job by Charles Cross to catch it. But then what happens is the right hand of Charles Cross does not land cleanly to the inside. In fact, Williams is going to use his left hand and he's going to lift up Cross using the left hand. And the right hand of Cross never landed cleanly. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but... You can tell that the right hand is not going to land cleanly. And because of that, Sam Williams is able to kind of toss Charles Cross to the side and he gets inside leverage. And Geno Smith happens to be stepping up into the pocket as well. And he goes down. Yes, this sucks because this was a third and six. It's not the end of the world. I think Charles Cross still shows so many great reps. But of course, as every player develops, Cross will have to just continue to develop. Just continue to get better and better and better. Now, I want you guys to watch Abraham Lucas on the other side. He's going to do a great job. He's very, very good. And you see it on tape, some of the little things that he does, especially when you guys slow it down. If you guys watch Dante Fowler, he's going to miss Abraham Lucas, who's going to basically fake a punch. Right? At least it almost looks like he's about to throw a punch. If you guys watch Lucas and watch the right and left hand, as he gets into his stance, he kind of cocks those arms back a little bit. Let me just back this up. He's going to back the arms up. He cocks him like he's about to throw a punch. He brings the hands forward just a little bit. And Dante Fowler is going to pick his right arm up. And he's going to try to swat Abraham Lucas's hands. There's the swat. And he's going to miss. Because Lucas just once again brings the hands back. So it's almost like he's throwing some sort of fake punch. He's throwing some sort of ghost move. And Fowler's going to miss. He's basically going to catch air. And from there, Lucas is going to lock in with Fowler. And at this point, Dante Fowler will never win this rep. He's in a really bad spot. He's off balance. And Lucas is going to fall right on top of him. That's a really, really good rep right there by Abraham Lucas. It's part of what makes this guy a very good offensive tackle. From the blocking angles to the advanced technique. Really, really nice job. If you guys watch the interior guys, the three interior guys are all going to do a great job picking up and passing off the defensive line game. You got a D tackle here who's going to try to slant into Evan Brown. Phil Haynes comes around. And he's going to end up getting back to number 96. Gets his hand onto 96 and stops it. Obviously, as you guys see, Charles Cross does lose the rep. Not a big deal. A really nice rep by pretty much everybody else minus Cross. Learning rep. Let's go ahead and get to the next play. Check out Phil Haynes on this play right here. He's going to do a really nice job. He's going to get his hands on the D tackle. Pass him off to Lucas. Get up to the linebacker. And he's going to finish the linebacker. Phil Haynes is a very, very good offensive lineman. I know some Seahawks fans weren't 100% sold on him, especially since him and Gabe Jackson rotated a lot last season. But I think the right decision of letting Haynes be the guy this season is the way to go. And I know last week he started at left guard as opposed to playing right guard. And some people were kind of confused about that. Some people thought that Bradford was possibly ahead of him on the depth chart. And I don't think that's the case. I, I think what the Seahawks realized is for Bradford, if he ever had to come in because of an injury to Damian Lewis... It would make the most sense to put Bradford at right guard and move Phil Haynes over to left guard. And again, it's plays like this, where you really see this guy absolute crush people. Even more so than that, if you guys watch Evan Brown on this play, he's going to absolutely crush this two-eyed uh, technique defensive tackle. Flat out puts him into the ground as well. This play right here pops for seven yards. Now keep in mind, the quarterback changed, but the offensive line stayed the same. And this is the third drive of the game. So it's still really, really nice rep. Let's go ahead and get to the next play. Alrighty guys, there's just two plays left here. Uh, this one here is the 48 yard pass to Najigba. 
great job by the offensive line. I will say this, though. It is a seven-man protection, which makes sense that the quarterback had all day to throw. But still, a good job nonetheless, right? The quarterback had no pressure, nobody around the quarterback. Of course, they did have the numbers, but this is kind of what you would expect with that. And then the final play of this unit being in the game is this one-yard touchdown run by the running back. Great job crushing this by Abraham Lucas. And even Disley, the tight end, who had a losing rep earlier, does a really nice job recovering on this one. He's going to make contact with the DN. He's going to really just crush him downwards. The running back's able to cut it right to the outside of him. You know, I really think that this Seattle Seahawks offensive line is one of the best in the NFL. And some people think that that is not a correct take. Some people think the Seattle Seahawks offensive line is not very good. And I would say that I don't think those people watch other offensive lines. As you guys know, this Football Scout channel is solely based around offensive line tape. Primarily, of course, I watch D-line and linebackers as well, but it's primarily offensive linemen. And I've watched a lot of offensive lines in the NFL, and I'm telling you guys, from an individual player perspective, from a coaching perspective, the Seattle Seahawks have a dominant offensive line. With the guy in Abraham Lucas, who has the potential to be a top 5-7 to seven overall offensive tackle by the end of this season, that is the upside that that kid has. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing. We will be doing weekly film content on the Seattle Seahawks. Rather, it's the offensive line, some of the young defensive line players like Derek Hall or Mike Morris. But we will be breaking down a lot of Seahawks content this season. So subscribe and I will see you guys next time with another video.